Hi and welcome to the Fiber Arc. In this video I'm going to show you how to make the mini moose. So as you can see, these are the parts that you'll be making. Um, there's the legs, brown for the body, and the antlers are in beige. With our kit and our patterns, um, it will include a template so that you can match each piece to what you're working on. You'll be able to know how big you're making each part. It's important that you remember that with the body to make it slightly smaller because as you work it will increase as you're, as you're going along. We also offer with our kit and with um, our website we have additional supplies that you can take a look at. Um, you may have these tools already. We have felting needles, this is a coarse and then an all-purpose. And we have North American made high-density foam as well as 100% wool felting surfaces. We have tulip tools in two different sizes, a three needle and an individual single tulip tool. Let's get started. So using your brown wool, whichever wool color you would like to use, you just start rolling a section to the size that you can see on the diagram. So you take some wool, this is carded wool, so it's prepped for needle felting, which means all the fibers are nice and close together and entangled um, slightly, so they're less perfect than top, which is great for felting. So you want to roll it nice and tight to the size that you see on the diagram. Now with a moose, the, um, the shoulder section is slightly bigger. So as you're rolling, just keep that in mind that you can use more wool and begin to sculpt it already on that shoulder section. So again, just keep in mind the size that you see on the diagram. And then you just take this you pull off the section that you no longer need, wrap this around, and then poke it with your felting needle. The needle has little barbs on the last two centimeters, so you only need to poke it lightly, and you're just going to continue to poke this until it's all nice and smooth. If it's not big enough, just add more. If it's too big, just keep poking. Wool is very forgiving, and it allows you to shape it to whatever size you would like. You can also extend your wool colors by using core wool or, or wool that you're not um, going to use as much of in this project. So if you have a, a lighter wool color or a darker that you don't think you're going to use, then you can use that as your core wool and then just wrap it in the color that you'd like to see on the outside and then poke that in place and it will completely cover it. And that's just a handy way of extending your wool colors. So as you can see, you've poked it you know, just a tiny bit, a little bit longer, and then this is nice and firm. You want it to be quite sturdy in order to um, keep its shape and, and hold its structure nicely and to be able to put those details that you're going to need, especially in things like the face. So next I'm going to show you how to make the legs. Now the legs you need to roll them nice and tight. So you're just going to take a portion of your, your wool robe and your carded wool. Just take a section of that because you won't need all of it. I like to fold it in half and then fold in the end. And then start to roll it nice and tight. The tighter you get it, the less time it's going to take to felt. So you want to get it nice and tight. 
and get these legs really, really sturdy. And again, check this size with the diagram and then hold it with your, your fingers and just lightly poke it with the felting needle until all of those fibers are smooth and it feels strong and firm. And each piece will take about probably one to ten minutes to felt depending on the size and how much shaping it's going to need. So something like a leg would take about one to two minutes to do. And you can turn it and do the top. A good thing to remember with the legs is to actually leave the top section slightly loose. That way when you're attaching it to the body it's going to join a lot smoother. So this is the range of wool colors that we have. Um, we have these available on our website too. And you're going to need a range of different browns and then the black and the white as just accents. And as you can see on the legs here, we are wrapping, so we're taking a little bit of your gray fiber and you're going to just poke that into the bottom of the foot and then you can just keep poking it around the outside and you want to form a bit of a bell shape um, so as you can see here it's somewhat poked in a little bit more a little bit more and uh, and then you just want to take some white wool and just wrap it around to make that detail and then you're just going to poke that in place if you'd like the hooves to be slightly bigger, you can always take an additional bit of your gray fiber and wrap it around just to increase the size and make it a pretty bell shape on the bottom. And you can again poke that in place. So attaching your legs to the body that you've made, now you can see that the shoulder section is significantly larger than the um, back section on your moose body. Invariably when you're making the legs, two will be slightly thicker and two will be slightly thinner. Um, use your thick ones on the back just to give it some support. Um, the moose is quite front heavy and it's good to have a good base at the back. So you're just gonna, like I said, with the fibers being looser, you're just gonna place those on and then poke those in. And then take your thinner front leg. And if you need to check with the diagram where to place the legs, that can be handy to know the spacing and the distance between them. So you want to keep poking this until it's all completely smooth. So this needs to be poked for a little bit longer just to make sure that they're attached nice and firm. And then again you just flip this round, thicker leg to the back. Poke it in place and do the same with the front. Match them up at the bottom and keep poking. And keep poking these until they're nice and smooth. Once you have those, you're just going to take a small section of your fiber, the body color fiber, and you're just going to wrap each leg to smooth that transition. 
and strengthen the work. Just wrap it around. And then poke this in place. And as you can see, you do that for each leg. Now using whichever color of brown wool just roll ahead the same size that you see as on the diagram. Again, the back portion of the head is going to be slightly bigger. So you just roll more wool towards the back end. And as you can see on the ones I've already started, it's fairly large and you keep poking it until it becomes the size and shape that you see on the diagram. You can really sculpt the wool at this point and shape the different areas. You can add more wool as well if you need to increase the size of the nose. Just simply wrap it and then poke it. And again check with the diagram so that you know how big and what shape you're going for. To attach the head to the body, you simply place one on top of the other and poke through them both. You want to make sure that you poke all the way around so that it's nice and secure. Once you've done that, take a section of your brown wool and smooth that transition. Wrap it around so that it's nice and, and blends those parts together. And you want to poke this for a minute or so until it's nice and smooth and the joint is nice and strong. We're now going to make the antlers, and to do this, you're just going to take a section of your light beige or cream colored wool, and you're going to just fold it into the shape, and then rest this on your felting surface, and you're just going to poke it to shape it. Now you can leave the end slightly fuzzy. And then as you're working, just shape the wool into the same um, kind of rolling kind of points on the antlers. You can use the diagram to check. And you can also take a section of beige wool and then felt a little bump on your antler. You can also poke into it and you feel free to really sculpt the wool the way you would like it. You can poke in and define the antlers a bit more and make little indentations. But this is all just sculpting the wool.
the front section is sort of like a canoe shape and then you add a little, little bump on for the next part. It's really important to double check the size of your antlers against the diagram and against each other so that you have two that match. Um, sometimes when you're working on them they'll have a slight curve in them and you can always use that to your advantage and, and put those on the, the head as so. Next I'm going to show you how to make the little extra, you're going to need quite a few little extra brown bits um, for ears, the tail, and the little um, little beard on your moose. So you're just going to take a section of fiber and then just fold it into the shape that you're going for. And then things like this are really important to use your felting surface for just because they're quite intricate. They come together very quickly, so it doesn't take too long to make these parts. And again, just poke them until they're nice and smooth. Like so. You'll need a bigger one for the tail, a tiny one for the little beard, and then two medium-sized ones for your ears, but do check your diagram for the sizes of those. Now for attaching these parts, um, the antlers, you just put on the back of the head and just overlap them and then poke them in place. And again, just poke these until smooth. Take a portion of your brown fiber and just cover over the join. And just continue poking that until it's smooth. You can also attach his little beard. I just this is a little bit more detailed. Then to attach an ear, simply put it in place and then poke into the back section. Again, you've left a few bits of fiber so that they're easier to attach at the end. And those ears, just check the diagram for positioning and then make sure that they're matched when they're put on. Now this is a moose that was made in the lighter color, so I'm going to do the details in the slightly darker brown. And to do face details, what I like to do is take a tiny, tiny bit of fiber, roll it between my fingers so that it smooths those fibers and almost begins the felting process already. And then I put it in place, 
felt it with the needle. So this is for his nose. And you just curve the wool. You have to be very careful at this point. You don't want to snap your needle. So try to be very careful when you poke the fibers that you're not putting pressure on the needle on the side. And then I like to do a little smiley face mouth on it. So I take it the wool and I you can see that I've done it on here already. But you just take your fiber and go all the way across and then poke it in place. Like so. And for the eye, you can do a little eyebrow to hold just above the eye. And you're just going to take a portion, like a small section of your your fiber and you can just roll it into an eyebrow. This might need to be slightly bigger, so I'll take a little bit more and just add that to it. And just fashion it into a thin roll of fiber that you can put onto your moose's, moose's face. And then just poke it as you can see the other side, it just frames the eye. And this is what I like about using fiber rather than anything like a glass eye, is that you can add a lot more structure and color to your work. So inside of this, I'm going to take some of my lighter beige color and make an oval shape. And then I will take some of my dark brown. Again, roll it between my fingers so it smooths the fibers. And then poke it in place. Now the other side I've just poked it a little bit longer so that it disappears and becomes a bit more defined. But this is the steps of how you do that. And lastly, what you're going to do is you're going to take your tail and pin the tail on your mini moose. Just poke that until it's nice and smooth in position. If you'd like to make him into an ornament, you just take a regular sewing needle or darning needle with a thread of embroidery cotton or thick cotton. Place your needle in the middle. You can double check if he hangs balanced. As you can see, he's slightly leaning forward, so you can just keep repositioning until about right and then you go all the way through keep hold of one side of your thread and all the way back up again
and then he will hang as an ornament. And then you just tie the top together in just a through knot. You can also make him a little scarf out of felt. You can felt one out of wool um, with your just a felting surface and needle, or you can use some fabric, some pre-felt fabric. Um, and this is actually a sheet of 100% wool felt. And you just take a section, you can measure your, your mousse to see how long you would like it, whether you like it wrapped around twice, just cut it to the length that you would like. And you can also just cut the ends, make a little fringe the length that you would like. And that is it. Your little mini moose will be complete. Thank you for joining us for this instructional video. Um, remember we have supplies on our website. We have a wildlife wool selection that comes in all the different colors that you would need. We have felting tools and supplies. Join us on social media. We have a YouTube account, Instagram, Facebook. We would love to connect with you there. 